section 12.2 talks about additional congruence theorems. So the first one we're going to talk about here is something called the angle side angle or the ASA property. It says if two angles in the included side of one triangle are congruent to two angles in the included side in the other triangle, respectively, then the triangles are congruent. Okay, uh, so notice what they're saying here, this angle here, this angle here, this side here, this side here, and then this angle here. And this is what we call, excuse me, the angle side angle property, okay? So then we have another one called angle angle side. It says if two angles in one side opposite of those two angles of a triangle are congruent to the two corresponding angles in the corresponding side uh, in the other triangle, then the two triangles are congruent. Okay, so again, uh, we can see that this angle, oops, this angle here corresponds to this angle here. Uh, let's see, this side here corresponds to that side there, this angle here and that angle there, right? All righty. So now it says, show that the two triangles are congruent. Okay. <clears throat> So we can look at, we have two triangles here. We have two, oops, we have two triangles here. A, B, D. And I'm just going to kind of separate them a little bit. C, B, D. Okay. So this is 70 degrees. This is 70 degrees. This is 50. This is 50. Whatever measure this is, that has the same measure, right? So we would say that these triangles are going to be congruent by angle sine angle, right? So I would say angle ABC is congruent to angle CBD. Oops, that was a mistake here. This should be D. So this is a D over here. My bad guys, sorry about that. And line segment BD, oops, BD is congruent to itself. And angle BDA is going to be congruent to angle BDC, right? So this angle here and that angle there. All right, so this next problem here says, determine whether the conditions angle R is congruent to angle O, angle Q is congruent to angle N, and QR is uh, congruent to NO to prove that triangles PQR and MNO are congruent and justify your answer. Okay, so let's take two triangles, P, Q, and R. P, Q, R. And the other one's going to be M, N, O. M, N, O. Okay. So let's see what we know. We know that angle R and angle O are congruent. So angle R and angle O are congruent. We know that angle Q is congruent to angle N. Okay. And we know that line segment QR, this one right here, is congruent to line segment NO, and is that enough? So look what we have. We have angle, side, angle. So yes, it is by angle, side, angle, right? Okay. Uh, the next one says, show that the triangles are congruent. Okay, so I'm just going to draw two separate triangles again, just so that I know I can separate these two. Okay. So here is A... Here's B, here's C. We know that this is 30 degrees. We know that that's 90, so I know by default that's going to have to be 60, right? Because everything has to add up to 180 degrees. And what else do we know? We know this side here has a measurement of 3, okay? I'm going to draw the same triangle, DEC. D, E, and C. 
So I know that side EC is 3. I know that angle E is at 90 degree angle. I know that angle D is 30 degrees. So this one here has to be 60. Okay. So we want to show that triangle ABC A, B, is congruent to DEC. Okay. So <clears throat> what do we know? We have... We could say angle ABC is congruent to angle DEC, right? And then we could say line segment BC is congruent to line segment EC, this one here and that one there. And then I might say angle BCA is congruent to angle ECD and so we have angle side angle right okay guys I'm going to skip this part right here we don't need to do worry about proving the parallelogram business but we are going to look at this next one here and it says determine whether the triangles are congruent if so, name the postulate or theorem that justifies our answer. Okay, <clears throat> so we're looking at the two triangles that we're going to have here. So we might say, oh, I don't know. Come on, pen. here we go. DCB, BAD, right? Something like that. Okay, so let's see. <clears throat> we know that this angle here corresponds to that angle there. And this angle here corresponds to that angle there. And this side is congruent to itself. So they are by angle, angle, oops, angle, angle, side, right? Angle, angle, side. So I would pick C by angle, angle, side. Those are the pieces that we know match up. Okay. All right. So the next part I have here, properties of quadrilaterals. We have trapezoids, we have an isosceles trapezoid, we have um, certain properties of them, consecutive angles between parallel sides or supplementary. Uh, let's see, what else do we have? In an isosceles triangle, it says each pair of base angles are congruent, pair of opposite sides are congruent. Uh, if a trapezoid has congruent diagonals, it is isosceles. A parallelogram says a parallelogram <clears throat> has all the properties of a trapezoid. Opposite sides are congruent. Opposite angles are congruent. Diagonals bisect each other. And a quadrilateral in which the diagonals bisect each other is a parallelogram. Okay, so we know that the diagonals bisect each other. Okay. Uh, let's see. Rectangle. A rectangle has everything a parallelogram does. All the angles are right angles. A quadrilateral in which the angles are right angles is a rectangle. Uh, the diagonals of the rectangle are congruent and bisect each other. And a quadrilateral in which the diagonals are congruent and bisect each other is a rectangle. Okay. Uh, we have a kite. It says lines containing the diagonals are perpendicular to each other. Uh, let's see. A line containing one diagonal is a bisector of the other diagonal. One diagonal bisects non-consecutive angles. A quadrilateral in which the line containing one diagonal is a perpendicular bisector of another one is called a kite. Uh, let's see, a rhombus. Rhombus has all the properties of a parallelogram and a kite. A quadrilateral in which all the sides are congruent is a rhombus. The diagonals of a rhombus are perpendicular to and bisect each other. Uh, let's see... A square has all the properties of a parallelogram, a rectangle, and a rhombus, and a rhombus is a right with a right angle is a square. Okay, so for the first question here, guys, it says a quadrilateral is a blank if and only if the diagonals are perpendicular and bisect each other. Okay, so I'm going to look for one that says the diagonals are perpendicular and bisect each other. Diagonals are perpendicular and bisect each other would be rhombus. So for part A, I'm going to say rhombus. Okay, the second part, part B, says 
A quadrilateral is a blank if and only if the diagonals are congruent and bisect each other. So I'm going to come back up here. Congru diagonals are congruent and bisect each other. Here we go. That would be a rectangle. Okay. So for part B, we're going to say rectangle. Now, I want to give you all a heads up. When you're doing this problem here in your homework, the problem is going to vary. Sometimes it may say uh, something like, uh, give me a second and I'll tell you. So, guys, sometimes it may say something like the diagonals are, are perpendicular. It may only have one of the requirements here. And when you come back and look, if it doesn't, if it only has one of them, like it only says something like the diagonals are perpendicular. Um, uh, that would be a kite. Um, my, what I was trying to get at is sometimes the answer is none. And what you have to do is you have to go back and whatever the condition it gives you here, you have to be able to find all those conditions on one of these kind of figures, all right? Uh, let's see. Uh, the next part, part A says, if a rhombus is a square, it must also be a rectangle. So look, it says a square has all the properties of what? A rectangle. So part A is going to be true. Okay. And a rhombus is a parallelogram. Yes, it's also a parallelogram. So that's also going to be true. Okay. All right. So this next problem here says, given triangle ABC and DEC with congruent parts, what else is needed to show congruence? Okay. So... They're asking us, how do we know that these triangles are going to be congruent? So we have this side, that angle, that angle, uh, this angle here, and this angle here. And look what it says. Line segment AB, which is this one here, it would correspond to which one? DE. So DE would be, excuse me, the one that we would have. And then it says, then there's congruence by, and we're going to select from here, so I want you to notice, we're going to have this angle, this side, and this angle. So this would say angle, side, angle, right? And then it says to use, and we'll have some choices here, we would say we'd have to know that BC, so BC is this one here. That would be congruent to, let's use two lines, uh, EC or AC. Let's go with a different color. AC would be congruent to which one? AC. Then it would be DC. It would be here. Okay. And so then we would be able to choose, and we might have something like side angle side, right? Because we could say something like uh, side angle side or side angle side. We'd have to know something like that, okay? All righty. So now the next one here says, given circle O with center D and diameter AC in the figure below, find each of the measures of the angles. Okay, so we know the diameter is AC. That means that this is going to be a radius, and this is going to be a radius, and this is going to be a radius, okay? So I want you to think about this triangle right here, okay? We know that this side and this side are the same. Okay, if we know that those sides are the same, that means that their base angles are the same. So I would know automatically that the measure of angle 3 would be 30 degrees. Okay, and if I wanted to find the measure of angle 1, then I would say, well, it's going to be 180 minus the sum of those two, which would be, I'd, they'd have to add up to 60. So the measure of angle 1 would be 120 degrees. So I know this one here would be 120. Let's see, what else do we know? <clears throat> so if I know that the measure of angle 1 is 120 degrees, remember, this whole thing has to add up 180. So then measure of angle 2 would have to be 60 degrees, right? Okay. So now I know that the measure of angle 2 is 60 degrees. I still need to find the measures of angles 4 and 5, okay? Well, we already said the measure of angle 5. I'm sorry. We said that was 30 degrees. So I need to find the measure of angle 4. So if I know that the measure of angle 2 
was 60 degrees, and we know that the measure of angle 3 is, uh, let's see, where is it? Angle 3, angle 3 is not 30, angle 5 was 30. Oops, sorry about that, guys. Oops, let me erase this right here. Angle 5 was 30. Oops, here we go. Angle 5 was 30, yes. I didn't have angle 3 yet. Let me see if I can find angle 3. Okay, so let's see. The other thing we know, guys, is because this is a radius and this is a radius, then I know that angles 3 and 4... Oops. Come on, pen. Oh, come on. There we go. Since these are radius, right, they have the same measure, then their base angles will be the same, okay? So measure of angle 3 and measure of angle 4 are going to be the same. And if we already knew that the measure of angle 2 was 60, this one was 60, so that means that when we add them all up, we're going to get 180. So suppose we decide to call this, I don't know, A. And that one's also going to be A. So 2A plus the measure of angle 2, which was 60, has to add up to 180 degrees. Okay. So let's minus 60 on both sides. So 2A would be 120. Oops. Why do I keep dividing by A? Divide both sides by 2. And so A would be 60 degrees. So measure of angle 3 would be 60, and the measure of angle 4, oops, would be 60. Okay. And there are my angles. All right. So let's see. It says the surveyor wanted to know the length of the bridge AB. So let's figure out where AB is. AB is this piece right here. Okay. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> He designed the figure to the right. Explain how he can use his diagram to find the length of the bridge. Okay, so let's see. Um, and we're going to fill in this part right here. So look what it's telling me. Tell me angle triangle ABC. So triangle ABC is going to be congruent to triangle EDC. Okay, by, let's see if we can figure out how do we know that they are congruent? Okay. So let's see. Well, we know this angle here and this angle here match up, and we know that this side here and this side here matches up, and we're also going to know that angle and that angle are going to have to match up because they're vertical angles. So we have angle, side, angle. So this here is going to say angle, side, angle. And then, so it's telling me that the measure of angle AB, or side AB, is going to be congruent to, this one would be ED, uh, by CPCTC, right? Corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. And then, so it's asking me, how long is this piece here? Well, it's going to be the same as that one right there, which was 92. All right, and then construct an equilateral triangle whose sides are congruent to this one here. So if you look at this side here, D would be the one that has the measures of those sides, right? Equilateral means all sides got to be the same. And that is 12.2.